You have absolutely no business buying a 350K car when you're earning less than 50,000 Rand per month. No reason. Today we're going to be talking about cars. The number one wealth killer. This is why you're feeling unhappy and poor and having chest pains and really struggling to do a lot of things that you really want to do. So according to recent research, the average South African salary is circa 26,000 Rand. That equates to 312,000 per annum. And that's $16,800. A recent research on car ownership pegged the average cost of owning a car at 11,600 Rand, which equates to about 640 US dollars per month. Now you have this average salary of 26 and you have 11,600 as your average cost of ownership of a vehicle. And that equates to 44% on average going to vehicle payments for an average South African. That's a lot of money, guys. <laughs> Especially when the global average is sitting at 12%. And this average cost of ownership figure includes four key metrics, which are your installment, your insurance, your fuel, and maintenance costs. Of which 46% goes to installments, about 35% goes to an individual's fuel, 15% towards insurance, and 4% towards maintenance. It doesn't include depreciation, which to be honest, sits at between 15 to 30%. People are spending a lot on their cars. And I understand, right? In a country like South Africa, the distances are very long between places, and it's just convenient to have a car. But is 44% the right percentage to be allocating to owning a vehicle of your dreams. So today we're going to be unpacking the different rules when it comes to buying a car and buying the right car based on your current salary. How much car can you actually afford based on how much you earn? And by the end of this video, you'll have an idea of the maximum you should be spending on a car based on your income right now, your net income, not your gross income and how you can loosen your belt a bit if you're already in the weeds because it's not always easy to get out of these contracts once the dealers have sold you that car it's so hard to actually get out of it but hopefully you'll get some idea or inspiration from this video so we'll start with the 25 to 35 percent rule this is a guide that proposes that an individual should spend between 25 to 35% of their gross, you heard that right, gross income on their car, basically. Doesn't make a lot of sense now, does it? What that means is if you're earning a million dollars per annum, you can spend up to 350,000 on a car every year. The problem I have with this rule is that it doesn't account for tax or any other contributions, medical aid, any other contributions, 29 Skodo going towards a car. That doesn't make sense. So scrap that rule. I propose looking at between 15 to 20% of your net income as an allocation towards your vehicle. And these are all in costs, right? Let's unpack the numbers. So. With the 25 to 35% rule, these amounts become increasingly more the higher your salary is. So 30,000, 10,500 would be going towards your car. 50,000, 17,500 goes to your car. 65,000, 22,750 goes to your car. 80,000, 28K towards car ownership expenses. There are some people who really love cars and 35% doesn't seem to be all that bad. I propose 20% at the top end of your net income. And this is what it looks like. 30,000 would mean that you allocate 6,000. At 50,000, you allocate 10,000 all in costs. 65,000, you allocate 13,000 all in costs. And at 80,000, 16,000. 
at a net level. So 15,000 would be your net. Now, why is this better? I'm going to call this the Yvonne Freely 20% rule. This is better because it's realistic for one. It also allows you to not get a crappy car, right? You're not driving a Skoro Skoro down the road. You have a decent car. And now we have so many options. We buy cars. We, we have so many options to buy a decent car at the price ranges that I've just mentioned on a monthly basis. And also, it just allows you to do other things with your money. It accounts for taxation and other deductions that are going to come off your gross income, which the 25 to 35% rule doesn't do. Okay, so what does that mean? So me being me, I ran the numbers because that's what your girl does. I run the numbers. A person who's earning 30,000 should be looking at vehicles between 140K and 160K. So I ran the numbers on the West Bank financial calculator tool. Very intuitive, very easy to use. And they deal with mostly cars. Anyway, I put in 140,000 and then I put in 135 to about 160. And I played around with the interest rate between 11% and 13%. I didn't put a balloon payment because I don't believe in it. So 140 to 160, assuming 13% interest, this is at the top end for five years, right? The sweet spot or on average, you'd be looking at around 3,750 as an installment. And then looking at that breakdown that I gave you, the 35% to fuel, 15% to insurance and 4% to maintenance, you get a ballpark figure of about 5,775. Let's just round that up to 6,000. And so for a person earning 30,000 after tax, that's the money that's coming into your account. Max 6K is what you should be negotiating with your insurance guys, with your car dealership. The car dealers will make it happen. Right. We'll talk about the implications of the different assumptions in a different video. But today, just for simplicity, 6K is your cap. So the car you're looking for is 140,000 to 160K. If you're earning 30,000 and below. On the other side, if you're earning about 65,000 take home, you should be looking at a car that's between 350 to 375 K. So that's how you're supposed to be looking at it. You have to buy a car based on the salary that you're actually earning, not based on these crazy percentages that we're told to actually use. Remember when I was telling you about the Joneses and how much they actually don't care. People will look at your car that you are breaking your back for and forget about it. Five seconds later, Buy a car that makes sense for your circumstances and not for the people. No clout here, please. Especially when it comes to cars. You'd rather spend that money on experiences, on buying property or any other investments. Not a vehicle. All right, so if you actually don't know how much you're spending on your car or the cost of transportation to you, I have a budgeting model that has worked for me for years and is tried and tested. And I've done a video on it. It's called the 60 20 20 rule. If you haven't already, please check it. I'll link it up somewhere here. I'll see you in my next one.